Toyota just leaked a 1 megawatt hydrogen fuel cell backup. Wondering what to buy in the new collection of Toyota? Well, this info might help you out. Toyota's just leaked a 1 megawatt hydrogen fuel cell backup. What is the whole history of this revelation? When's it going to launch? This product is going to be a bomb in the energy sector. So let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to Tech Addicts, where we give you the latest updates in the EV world. So stay with us till the end of this video to know more about today's episode. And before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future. Toyota's unwavering support for hydrogen fuel cells has surprised and irritated many in the electric car world. For some of them, the technology is, at best and at worst, it is fossil fuel-friendly vaporware. With Daimler's recent declaration that it will de-emphasize fuel cells in favor of batteries, the author spoke with Toyota Connections to see whether they too would scale down their fuel cell efforts. Toyota and NREL are all set to build a 1 megawatt fuel cell backup. Together with the United States Department of Energy, Toyota is developing a prototype of a fuel cell power generation system with a capacity of 1 megawatt, which has the potential to one day serve as a direct replacement for a conventional generator. At the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, or NREL, in Arvada, Colorado, the Department of Energy's National Renewable Energy Laboratory is collaborating with Toyota Motor North America to install and evaluate a 1 megawatt proton exchange membrane fuel cell power generation system at the NREL's Flatirons campus. The announcement was made after Microsoft and Plug Power recently successfully demonstrated a prototype 3 megawatt backup system based on fuel cells. The demonstration was carried out in collaboration with Plug Power. Data centers are looking for ways to replace diesel generators that are powered by fossil fuels, and hydrogen fuel cells are a strong contender in this race. Despite the fact that the cost of the energy source, H2, and the fuel cell modules is currently significantly higher than that of conventional diesel generators, these cells are expected to replace diesel generators in the near future. As part of the Department of Energy's effort to establish a market for clean hydrogen across a variety of industries, the Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Technologies Office is contributing a portion of the $6.5 million needed to fund the three-year collaboration. The National Renewable Energy Laboratory is in the process of developing a 1 megawatt fuel cell system that will integrate multiple Toyota fuel cell modules into a larger system in order to provide responsive stationary power, also known as a backup power that can be delivered quickly. A previous research project that investigated the use of automotive fuel cells to power a data center and successfully integrated a 70 kilowatt fuel cell with IT racks was funded by NREL and was carried out in the past with participation from HPE and Diamond. According to the report that NREL compiled on that project, Daimler and HPE had plans to expand this technology to a version with 250 kilowatts and then eventually to 3 megawatts, but the project was terminated in 2020, when the project was decommissioned due to COVID and a lack of secured funding to operate it further. Further testing and analysis were also cut short. The new Toyota system will be able to produce direct current as well as alternating current and it will be capable of operating on a larger scale. Telios is currently integrating the Toyota fuel cells, which were initially developed for the market of light-duty fuel cell electric vehicles. These fuel cells are destined to be delivered to NREL. Toyota's designed an integrated control system in order to operate the fuel cell modules in such a way as to achieve the highest possible level of system life and efficiency. The team at Toyota intends to simplify and streamline the design in a manner comparable to that of Microsoft and Plug Power so that it can be manufactured in large numbers as a drop-in replacement for diesel generators. According to Christopher Yang, Group Vice President of Business Development for Fuel Cell Solutions at Toyota, achieving carbon neutrality requires all of us to explore new applications of zero emission technology. This includes how that technology will integrate with other systems, which the project within REL will identify. The application of our modules and deployments of this magnitude shows that Toyota's fuel cell technology is scalable. Whether it be a single fuel cell module for one passenger vehicle or multiple systems combined to power heavy duty equipment, the scalability of of Toyota's fuel cell technology. Researchers from NREL will stress the system and push its operational boundaries in order to identify performance limitations and degradation over time. This should result in the production of valuable real-world data that fuel cell developers can use in future applications. The performance of the system will also be evaluated in the context of its integration with systems for the storage of energy and the generation of renewable energy, such as solar, photovoltaic, and wind power. 
Daniel Layton, a research engineer at NREL and the principal investigator on the project, stated that we will study the scaling of PEM fuel cell systems for stationary power generation to understand what the performance, durability, and system integration challenges are. NREL is now able to conduct research on fuel cells at a megawatt scale thanks to the installation of this fuel cell generator system. At the NREL's Flatirons campus, the fuel cell generator is being used for the Advanced Research on Integrated Energy Systems, or ARIES, megawatt-scale hydrogen project. This project also includes a PEM electrolyzer with a capacity of 1.25 megawatts, a hydrogen storage system with a capacity of 600 kilograms, and a fuel cell generator with a capacity of 1 megawatt. These components provide a platform for demonstrating renewable hydrogen production, energy storage, power production, and grid integration at the megawatt scale. The installation of the fuel cell generator system is scheduled for the summer of this year, and the full system is scheduled to be commissioned later in 2022. After all, the bulk of early Model S buyers, price-insensitive early adopters, opted for higher-range automobiles. In the previous cases, doubling the battery size would cost about $5,000 more. If a buyer could choose between a 200-mile electric car for $30,000 and a 400-mile electric vehicle for $35,000, I believe they would choose the one with the higher range. We definitely would, though whether real-world purchasers would regard a hydrogen-powered vehicle to be an electric car remains to be seen. So how does the 400-mile battery versus 400-mile fuel cell comparison look? Second round, batteries versus fuel cells. The Department of Energy predicts that mass-produced fuel cell propulsion will be less expensive than mass-produced battery propulsion. The fuel cell is about $6,000 cheaper in the cost goal scenario, with hydrogen at $4 per kilogram and a car that travels 50 miles per kilogram, it would take 75,000 miles of driving before fuel cell vehicle ownership became more expensive, and that assumes cheap power. Even if a second fuel cell system were installed, a significantly less cost-effective method of increasing power than growing or rebuilding the fuel cell stack, the fuel cell car would still have an upfront cost advantage of about $3,000. In the ideal world, fuel cell propulsion is $2,400 less expensive than battery propulsion. When a second fuel cell system's added, the initial expenses are even. Did anybody see it coming? We didn't. However, Yoshikatsu Tanaka, the Mirai's chief engineer and an ardent electric car critic, may not want to build a social media presence just yet. This pricing advantage would be available only if manufacturing expanded considerably, which Toyota is attempting. There are further factors to consider. New car consumers may accept electric cars with 300 or even 200 miles of range, assuming that most will be able to charge at home and therefore start each day with a full battery. We anticipate that this will be the case for the vast majority of vehicle customers, but there's still a sizable potential market of battery skeptics. On the other hand, some customers may choose to pay gasoline light costs for a three-minute hydrogen fill-up rather than risk getting stuck in an hour-long queue at a fast-charging station on a holiday weekend road trip, or risk restricting their mobility in the case of a lengthy power outage. Hey, that's going to end today's episode. Please let us know in the comment box what you all thought about it, and make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to watch more videos like this one. Thanks for watching. This one. Thanks. For